I want to make three very specific points. Uh, the first one is about education and learning. Uh, and Prakash Sahuji kindly referred to a book that I have written recently about that and which might be relevant to some of the young people in the room and some of the parents in the room. Uh, I'll also talk second about some of the issues that Dr. Anand raised, uh, because one of the things that we should be worried about is access. And all of this wonderful education that we are talking about, is it truly reaching the very last student? After 75 years, we are still struggling to get to the very last student. So what will it take to get there? Uh, and the last thing I'll talk about uh, is the role of technology and digital and online learning in all of this. Uh, because I think as a country, we have no choice uh, but to embrace it. So talking about education and learning, I think the NEP is very timely. And everything that has been referred to uh, by Dr. Anand and Professor Karmalkar about how the NEP addresses the needs of the future, I heartily endorse. But there are two reasons why these are very important. Number one, I'll start with a, give you a personal example. Uh, when I was about 17, 18 years old, uh, I did not know what I should study. Uh, I was a bit clueless. And even today, 17, 18 year olds are confused. They don't know. In fact, they have many more options today than I had. Uh, fortunately, I got into IIT. Uh, I studied at IIT Kanpur. For IIT Kanpur, my rank in JE was not very high. So I had only very few options. I could study metallurgical engineering or I could study aeronautical engineering. And I knew very little about these two subjects. But I wanted to go to Kanpur because my friends were there. And at least in my time, Kanpur was very famous. It was also close to Bihar, where I'm from. So when I talked to my father about what I should do, he says, I don't know anything about metallurgy or aeronautical. Uh, but he had set a goal for me. His goal was that I should get a job that would pay me 10,000 rupees a month. He was not expecting that the starting job would be 10,000 rupees a month. His, his, uh, his counsel to me was that during your career, 10,000 rupees a month kamana padega, nahi to you will not be able to uh, live your life comfortably. So that was my goal when I went for counseling. And uh, during the counseling, I was given this option. To, I said, but I want to study aeronautical because usme plane wind udane ko milega. So the professor said, huh, you can take aeronautical. Then I said, lekin usme nokri milegi to 10,000 rupay ki salary milegi ki nahi. So he said, ki yeah, mil sakti hai, but there are very few options for aeronautical in India. Ek HAL hai, you can join them. But if metallurgy, karoge, then you will get a lot more options because you can go at Sale, you can work at Tisco, you can work at Telco. These were all companies that I knew of. I was in Jamshedpur, Tata was a big name. So I chose metallurgy and studied metallurgical engineering for four years. I passed out in 1986. I was telling Professor Karmalkar, he's also from IIT Madras, three years my senior. But I must tell you that for 37 years that I graduated, I have not done any metallurgical engineering. I spent four years studying metallurgy. I had one course at that time, which was a new area called computer programming. In that course, I got an A. So I was very proud of myself that I got an A in computer programming. And because I had got an A in computer programming, Tata Burroughs Limited actually gave me a job that paid me many more times than the 10,000 rupees that my father had set the target for. Actually got me a passport and visa to go to the United States and work. I would have been working at TCS now if I had taken that job. But the point is that for one course, one course in four years, 
out of more than 50 courses that I would have done, I was given a job just for that one course, not for four years of metallurgy. This was happening 37 years ago. This is true much more today that what you study doesn't lead you to what you do. And the bigger problem is that places like Meta, where Natasha ji works, they are creating jobs for which the course doesn't exist. You can't predict what will be the job of the future. So, if you can't tell us what will be the future, then how will you study for it? There is no way to teach for the future. So what do you do? Do you not teach? I'm coming to that. The second problem is that all of you young people who are here, you have a real <laughs> bigger responsibility than I had. My responsibility was ki 10,000 rupees ki job leo. Your responsibility is how will you save the planet? We will all be gone, but climate change is here to stay. And unless you all don't solve for climate change, if you don't solve for health, if you don't solve for education, Dr. Anand was saying that only one in three or less than one in three students is going to college. Unless you don't solve for that, we are finished as a planet. Now, how will you solve those problems? You will not solve those problems by studying one subject. Because one subject does not give you the solution to these problems. These problems are multidisciplinary. These problems are interdisciplinary. So by studying one discipline, you are actually disqualifying or not making yourself capable to solve the problem. To solve this problem, you have to do what Professor Karmalkar talked about. You need to understand critical thinking, asking the right questions, looking at a problem from multiple perspectives, being open to the views of other people, ye padhana hoga aur ye seekhna hoga. Communication, he mentioned, these are all in the NEP. Uh, have holistic learning. Many other points that have been made about education. So the challenge now is that from studying subjects, what we have to do is help our young people develop a love for learning. From studying, you have to move to loving learning. Uh, there's a, our anchor, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, uh, gave the Doha from Kabir, where she talked about the Dhai Akshar Prem Ke. A lot of people have given examples of the Gurukul system that we had. People have mentioned Takshila and Nalanda and Vallabhi and Vikramshila, the old universities, they all actually espoused this philosophy to inculcate in young people a love for learning. Vaha pe ye nahi bolte the ki aap aaye to metallurgy padho, ya medicine padho, ya history padho. In fact, there Dwarpal would do an entrance test of whoever who came from whatever class or background or economic background. And then the Dwarpal would say, Ki, you have been admitted to the university and you could choose which Acharya you went to study for. And I'm not making this up. The Chinese documents that have been written about how Takshila used to work and Nalanda used to work have documented this, that this is how education used to work. It has happened through the last few centuries that education became about getting people jobs. Now we are having, we will be forced to go back to the old way of education because 36 years ago my education did got, got me a job but a very different job from what I studied. So the point is anyway education is not getting you the job that you are being educated in. So education should be about you being able to learn whatever you need to learn. And the last point I'll make about learning is that we all now have to learn throughout our lives. Agar hum seekhte nahi rahenge, then you will just not be able to keep up with the times. In fact, all of us are sitting here. Uh, there are eminent educationists here, people from different fields. We are all learning. 
all the time, otherwise we will not be relevant. Srimati Natasha Jog, when I met her last time, she was a TV anchor. Some of you may know that. Now she is talking about artificial intelligence and virtual reality and augmented reality and is working from one of the most foremost technology companies in the world. She has had to learn to be able to do this. If she, has not had to, if she had not learned, she would have always been a television journalist and not been able to come to this stage. So all of us have to constantly keep learning and therefore it's the love for learning that we have to inculcate in our children and in our young people. Without that, as a country, as a society, as a world, we are in deep trouble. I don't want to say this in a negative way because people are doing this, our NEP addresses this. Uh, so it's, it's very timely, but that's the deeper reason multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity is important. That is the reason why IIT and AIMS collaborating in Bhubaneswar is important. That is why bringing AI into medical technology again that Professor Karmalkar talked about is important. Very quickly, my second point was about access. The truth is, as Dr. Anand himself gave us the statistics, we have the largest number of young people in this world. Yet, only one in three, less than that, actually 30% is the GER, I think, these days. Less than one in three gets to go to college or get higher education. This is a massive problem that we should all be worried about. Unless we also think about access, and how do we get more and more people to get education? We will be missing out on this dividend, this huge advantage that we have, which is that the median age is low. The median age is low, but that median age population also has to be skilled up, educated, taught how to learn, as I was talking about. So I think Initiatives around making sure that education is accessible to everyone is very important. A lot of people criticize the university that I'm part of uh, at Ashoka University that it is very expensive. What most people don't know is that 20% of Ashoka students get a free education. Because we guarantee that if you get into Ashoka, the ability to pay will not get in the way of you getting a good education. So I think we have to somehow guarantee the, the, the education to people who are able to make it. We do it in the public sector, we do it in the government institutions, but in the private institutions, where this is a big problem. And the sad part is that in our country, 70% of all education is private, which is the highest in the world. M much more than anywhere in the world. And therefore, a lot of students are shut out from accessing that system because not all private universities are able to give generous scholarships. So this is a big conundrum that we have. I don't have a solution for it, but I may have a possible answer for it, which is my third point, which is the use of technology. The fact is that without online digital learning, we will not be able to get the GER up. The NEP ka policy hai of taking us to 50%, just think about it. That would mean doubling our entire education infrastructure, doubling the number of campuses, doubling the number of buildings, doubling the number of classrooms, doubling the number of professors, teachers, faculty. And the time frame that when, in which it needs to get done, it just will not be possible. So just as to open bank accounts, we now have a digital payment system which completely leapfrogged the, ability, the need to go to a bank branch and open a bank account and so on. I think somewhere the truth is that many, many young people in this country for higher education are only going to be able to get their education online. There is nothing wrong with that, I must tell you. Again, Natasha mentioned the importance of social learning. 
at our at our company Harappa, where we actually teach uh, some of these online these skills online, we have found that you can actually bring elements of social learning even in the virtual environment. And even if it is not as good as physical learning, the truth is alternative kya hai? People are not even getting the physical learning. So at least they are getting something. And they are getting something which is reasonably high quality. So there's an initiative now by the Ministry of Education to build a digital university. This is a new version of IGNU. IGNU was trying to do that in the offline, in-person world. If you wait and watch, India's digital university will become the very largest digital university in the world very quickly. Because it will provide quality education and it will provide quality education to everyone. And this is where the point I was making about affordability will come in because that education will also be inexpensive and high quality at the same time. Swayam has tried to do that. Some of you have seen that even now you can even get an IIT degree online. Bits Spilani has been providing degrees online for a long time. And those online degrees are actually not that expensive and they are very high quality. And lots and lots of students in India are now just going to that rather than going to a brick and mortar physical campus. So online and technology and digital learning are going to play a very important role. It will bring in the element of love for learning because now you can study what you want. You can study it whenever you want. So some of the classes that we are offering online at Ashoka, we have a 16-year-old in the class and a 72-year-old in the class. Same class with somebody who is 16 years old and in school with somebody who is 72 years old. So you can study whenever you want. You can study what you want. And you can study it in an affordable manner. And that is where some of all of this is going to come together. I think India as a country has the opportunity to innovate in education more than anywhere else in the world because our need is much greater. West ke log to already median age ke paar chale gaye, unka to time khatam ho gaya, but hamare jo young people hai, they have to uh, learn, learn quickly and learn in this new way and therefore a lot of education, entrepreneurship that is happening in this country will create the innovation and I am a firm believer in that. Again, I hope some of these ideas are helpful to some of the people in the audience, particularly the young people who have the biggest responsibility of taking these ideas forward. Again, thank you very much for inviting me here today, uh, and I wish you the very best for the rest of this conference. Thank you.